he came out and uh, made his proposal for the Gordian Knot, and we've become fr friends over the years, and I really have great respect for him as an artist. He grew up in Denver, for those of you who don't know, and he was a graduate of George Washington High School and CU Boulder. This is actually his third public art installation um, in, in the state of Colorado. And speaking of family here, his mom, uh, Donna, right there, Donna provided this wonderful reception for us because she is so proud of him. <laughs> <laughs> here, two brothers, a nephew, I don't know all, but anyway, thank you all so much for coming. Um, you know, he fascinated the committee, just like Jana said, with this whole idea of the Gordian Knot. We weren't quite sure how he was actually going to do it, but this is just an amazing project. I went and watched him when he was fabricating it out at Juno Works, and he was like this little kid. He was so excited, <laughs> he was so jazzed. You know, every every twist and turn, he was like, look, look what's happening. So anyway, we're proud of you. We're thrilled to have this installation, and come and share your vision. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you all. Wow, there's so many of you. Thank you all for coming. Uh, I never expected such a turnout, though, talking to my mother's friends, they, I don't think a lot of you had any choice. <laughs> so, and I want to thank my mother. <laughs> uh, she put me up for a month while I was here in Colorado working on the piece. She housed me, she fed me wonderfully, uh, and uh, she, like you, like Jill said, she arranged for all the wonderful refreshments. Thanks, Ma. You're the best. Uh, I also want to thank my wife, who is not here, unfortunately. She is in spirit. She's uh, home working on a new job that she just started this week, so just couldn't couldn't be away. Um, and my mother puts me up here, but my wife puts up with me. Okay? <laughs> and without her kindness and patience and constant support, I, I, there's just no way this stuff could happen. So. Uh, she's not here, but I, I just send all my thanks to her. And of course, Jill, um, she uh, smoothed a very bumpy road in this project. I couldn't have done it without her. Uh, she was wonderful. Um, and of course, the council. Um, uh, you guys commissioned me. And as we all know, we're hearing today, you're commissioning a lot more art, and I'm really happy about that. Um, and Mike Mancarella, is he, did he make it? No, he didn't. Well, he's the head of Juno Works, and he, his fabrication shop worked with me on this, and um, uh, he and the guys that did it, they just were in, infinitely patient. Uh, this was made of 61 different pieces of pipe, and I dare you to find the seams. And um, they just did a great job. Um, and yesterday, um, we were installing. We had a crane out here. We were lifting it into place. It was very exciting. And a couple walked by and they kind of, you know, and they go, well, what is this all about? It doesn't even match the building. <laughs> and, you know, you get a lot of comments about public art, and that's fine, and it should. Um, but I thought that would raise an interesting point. Um, my inspiration for this piece was not to match the building or to make the grounds around it look nicer. Um, that's for the architect, and I think he did a great job, frankly. Um, but there's a lot of confusion about what the artist does. Um, and I read an article not long ago that I'm going to quote here that describes more beautifully than I could the difference between the artist and the designer. And this article said that architects, landscape designers, and engineers are trained to identify a creative solution that speaks foremost to problem solving in response to a given set of conditions. Design professionals work with a different set of skills than artists, although their perspectives and creative responses may share similarities. In general, designers are tasked with concrete problem solving, and their discourse may be multivalent, that's a real $2 word, but must include functionality. Here, art and design part company, and this is the key line here, because the discourse of art does not necessarily, and only rarely, includes practicality. This sculpture is not practical. It doesn't serve a functional purpose. And while I hope it's interesting to look at, and yes, even beautiful, this was not my main um, concern. I wanted the work to inspire. 
I wanted it to transport the viewer. I wanted the poetry of its form to inspire new ways of thinking. And my inspiration for this piece comes from our common history 2,300 years ago. And in 333 BC, Alexander the Great was marching through what's now Turkey on his way to conquer the world to impress his dad. And um, he came to the town of Gordian. And in, town, in the town, there was this giant knot. And no one really knows what the knot looked like or how it got there. But the legend had that whoever could untangle this knot would rule Asia. Well, you know, Alexander's trying to do it. So what did he do? He went up to the knot. He looked at it. He couldn't find an end or a beginning. And he couldn't find a way to untangle it. And, but he couldn't fail. So he, he was a brilliant man. He looked at it, and he pulled out his sword, and he sliced it in half. Totally unexpected. And today, as it says on the plaque here, the term cutting through the Gordian knot is a metaphor for looking at a complex problem and solving it in a new and creative way. This is something students and faculty are always doing, and something when we are at our best, we all try to do. It's my hope that over the years, um, as students, faculty, and campus visitors look at this Gordian knot, they will, they will be challenged to find the best in themselves, something that is new and different, something they will, they will go and on to use in, cre in creative and bold ways. I thank the uh, Colorado Council for commissioning me uh, to create this sculpture, it's a true honor to, de get, to dedicate it now to the Colorado School of Mines and the people of Colorado. Thank you all so much for coming. Mm -hmm.